Good afternoon. There's a chance you are so familiar with the Christmas story that you miss the scandal and the shock that we find in it. So, before we shove Christmas back into storage for another year, let's take a close look at the story. Oh, you might not think we need to. After all, we've spent the last month listening to Christmas carols and watching TV specials. We've gone to church events. We've exchanged Christmas cards. We've put up decorations. You may feel as though you could recite the Christmas story by heart, and maybe you can. If so, I hope you notice a distinguishing feature about the story that we find in Luke chapter 2. Now, chapter 1 of Luke is full of whiz-bang fireworks before Christ is born. We find stories of angels appearing to people in unexpected places. We find messages about a great Messiah who will reign over an eternal kingdom. And if you didn't already know the story, you would be surprised at what happens next. It would be natural to expect Luke to tell us about Christ arriving in great power and awe, surrounded by great fanfare. But instead, what does he tell us? He tells us about a newly married couple who is living under the shadow of a scandal because she got pregnant before she should have. This couple was forced to flee from their home by the powerful and mighty Caesar Augustus who had issued a decree that they needed to have their noses counted. This couple had to travel roughly 80 miles as a crow flies. And it was a lot longer because they had to wind their way through mountain passes. 80 miles, by the way, is roughly the distance from Butler to Erie. But they were traveling on foot. They had no convenient highways to go along. There were no hotels or rest stops where they could go to. This trip would not have been much fun under the best of conditions. And do you remember? Mary was expecting a child. For those of you who are mothers, imagine making a trek like that during the last month of your pregnancy. And then, once this couple arrived at their destination, they couldn't even find a decent place to stay. And that was unusual because they lived in a culture that prided itself in hospitality. But no one had a spare restroom for them to use. They had to stay in a space that was typically reserved for animals. And that's where the Messiah was born. Jesus came into this world under trying circumstances. And those circumstances are even worse when we take Matthew's account of his birth into account. Because here we find out that there is a king who is hunting for him to kill him. And the family had to flee the country almost as soon as he was born. One of the great inversions of history is how Christianity has been transformed from the faith of the underclass to become the religion of the powerful and the elite. Especially as Luke describes Jesus' ministry, he focused upon the down-and-out people of society the widows who had no one to care for them, the sinners that everyone else looked down upon, the disabled and the sick that everyone ignored or maybe pitied. These are the people that Jesus went out of his way to touch. And he was able to connect with them because he was one of them. <laughs> Just one glance at how he was born could tell you, yep, Jesus knew what it was like. And the early church remained faithful to these roots that Jesus had laid for it. The early church was made up primarily of people from the underclasses of society. Slaves, women, day laborers, tenant farmers. And the church made a name for itself because of the way that it reached out to care for those who were in need. Roman society at this time saw vulnerability and need as a weakness as an indication that you're not a good person. But the Christians saw it as a call from God to care for such people. Unfortunately, over time, 
The church has become associated with the powerful and the influential, with the very people who had it out for Jesus even before he was born. So, when we hear people complain about the homeless people in their neighborhood being an eyesore, or when we hear people complain about refugees from violent nations on our borders, saying they're coming just to try to destroy our country. Or if you hear people wonder why those with disabilities think they're entitled to special privileges, anytime you hear something like that, or anytime you think it yourself, look at your nativity set. Remember, your savior was one of those people. Would you pray with me, please? Lord Jesus, your very birth is a call for us to care for the down and out of our world, for the ones who are ignored, the ones who are oppressed, the ones who are facing injustice, the ones who just don't get a fair shake in life, the ones for whom circumstances of life have made existence so difficult. This is who you were when you came into our world as that baby laid in a manger. So Lord, help us be true to you. Help us be true to the calling that you give to your people so that we may reach out to those who today are just like you were on that first Christmas. Amen. Thanks for joining me. We'll talk again later.